Hello everybody, and today we've got a golden axe on the bench. Um, this one's got a soldered on jamaloon by one of the previous owners. Um, the one thing to note with this one, uh, it's, it was originally an MVP. Well, when I say it was originally, I believe these are factory conversions, as I've actually seen a few of these absolutely identical on there. And there's a few other people that say the same thing, that these are factory conversions. They've all got the same, these same EPROM labels on them. Um, basically, it looks like this was MVP was an unpopular game, whereas Golden Axe was a popular game, both released around the same time. Um, so it's believed that Sega converted these in the factory to Golden Axe to make use of them rather than selling them as MVPs. Now, there's no difference in the board itself. It's, the, the motherboard's the same on all the system 16Bs, and the ROM boards are different, but the MVP and the Golden Axe ones are actually the same. The difference is the encryption CPU, and that is actually a genuine Sega encryption CPU, so that's what leads everyone to believe that these are genuine boards. So something we notice immediately, and it's actually very common on these boards, probably because of the height of them, but um, there's a cap missing there, and there's a cap missing there. And I, you always get a couple of caps missing on these, I've seen it so many times. So we'll get some fresh caps installed, and that will solve that first issue. Right, we replace those caps, and the game actually fires up fine. So if we clean it, we immediately notice we don't have any sound. Now if we, if we mess with the volume pot, we do get some hum. So it sounds like the amplifier section at least is working. So we need to check if the Z80 is running. Uh, if it is running okay, then we need to check around the pre-amplification section. Okay, so as the Z80 is actually socketed, we can just pull it out and stick it in the chip tester and we can see if it works. Spin spot on there. And we're doing it. Oh. Oh. Let's have a look at that. Yeah, that's a messed up Z80 if I ever saw one. Like, pretty much everything's failed on that. Okay, well let's at least try and use an 80 then. Right, we've got this sharp Z80, let's just give this one a test. Now that one is a pass. I've replaced the Z80, but we're still not getting any sound. I'm just trying Z80B as well, just in case it needs a faster speed rated one. Um, Ah, uh, nothing. Okay, let's uh, have, have a look, see if this is actually running. Well, this is interesting. Uh, I thought I'd be reading the EEPROMs for the sound CPU to make sure they're actually working. And the... I don't know which position it's at, but anyway, there's, there's two, two EEPROMs. And this one I've just tested first is giving me bad contacts at pin 5, indicating there's actually a hardware fault with that EEPROM. Right, with the second EEPROM we're getting bad contact at pins 21, 24 and 25. Um, I was surprised to see both of these dead. Well, coupled with the fact that the CPU is dead, it's quite possible something quite bad's happened to that bus. And that uh, seems to have killed everything on the bus. So we'll probably have to change the RAM as well if that's the case. Um, bad contact, you know, first of all you check it's actually inserted in the socket properly. But if it still says bad contact afterwards, it basically means that those pins are open circuit usually. Indicating a hardware failure. Um, so what we'll do is we'll at least try burning a new ROM first. Um, well, two ROMs and see if that fixes it. Right, as we're going to try and uh, reburn these sound ROMs, we need to identify which ROM set it is. So, let's just uh, put the right chip. Oh, it's the same as before. Two, 4001. Okay. So we'll read the chip in. This is basically just one of the CPU ROMs I've grabbed. Now uh, this one is reading fine, unlike the sound ones. It's verifying. And that was done successfully, right, so we we'll save it. Set unknown bin, yeah that's fine. And then what we do is we use main ROM ident. Uh oh. No match. Okay, so this is potentially an undumped or at least an unsupported version of the game. Right, I think we'll just have to go try a random. We we'll have to try a random set, I think, and uh, see if the sound ROMs will work from it. Right, so I've downloaded one of the parent sets of Gold Max ROMs, and we'll see if this is going to work. So we need to load in the ROM. Um, just put directory. 
So that one, two, three, one, two, three, eight, four, six. That's the one megabit one. So we'll load that in. Um, what have we got here? We're not on AC. We need an ST micro. So that's M. 27C 1001 uh, That one there, SD Micro Yep And we'll verify it's blank uh, It's not <laughs> Fail Right, we've changed the EEPROM, let's try another one A blank check That guy's looking better there we go, success, and no repeat, and let's do program. That all looks good, and on we go. I don't think you want to watch this entire programming process, let's just skip it. Right, it's just doing a second verification pass, and that is done. Right, and those two EEPROMs are in, but I've only guessed the set that they need to come from, so I'm not 100% sure they're going to be right yet. Uh, also, I'm not sure if the jumpers are right or anything, but I'll have to just assume that I'm trying this for now. So we've switched on, and we're back to where we were before. Let's start a game. Oh! That's exactly what we want to hear. Fantastic music on gold marks. This is looking all good. Don't know what the hell that is. Let's turn that down. <laughs> Well, that's gone weird. Hmm. Okay. Right, I've turned the sound down. That noise is really annoying. Um, let's just continue the game. So everything's fine. And then I'll kill somebody. I pressed the wrong button. Right, let's try again. Yeah, since I kill someone, it starts doing this siren -y noise, and then it disappears when I get killed. What the hell's that about? Right, so I've got the game into sound test, and I've gone through and you know tested all the sound effects and music. O E, Ugh. voice O E makes that friggin' siren noise. What the hell's that about? Back to O D. That one works fine. OE makes a horrible siren noise. Um, hmm, maybe that ROM's not quite right, or maybe the maybe the jumpers aren't right or something on it. Not sure. Needs further investigation. But I think this is a sound program. That's the voice ROM. So that is going to be the one that's the problem with the siren noise in it. Um, oh, another thing. Let's go back to zero. Do these sounds, is it a coincidence, or do these sounds sound like they've been ripped out of Gauntlet? That sounds like Gauntlet. That one sounds like an Atari sound as well. And that one. That one does as well. That sounds like an Atari sound. Are these sounds been robbed out of Atari games? Right, so I am pleased to report that I've now resolved the issue. So let's just play some of the sounds that previously weren't working. Oh. Missed there. There you go, we can see they're all working. Now the reason it didn't work previously is actually down to mistake. Now I need to explain. This is the original EEPROM. This is a D27C1000A by NEC. Now with EEPROMs there's two different types. Basically there's the JDEC standard which is like a standard pinout and there's the non-standard. 
uh, this is a non-JDEX standard. So, when we replace the EEPROM, we need to replace it with an equivalent non-JDEX standard EEPROM, or it will not work because it doesn't have the right pinout. On the JDEX, you've got A16s at pin 2, and on the non-JDEX, you've got the output enable there. So, basically, I identified the reason that the, the samples weren't working was because... Um, the, the upper upper portion, so A16, so the upper half of the ROM was not being selected and basically eventually worked out because it was a, a wrong EEPROM. So the one I eventually burnt for the board was this Toshiba TC57-1000D. Now normally the non-JDEX are the 1000s and the JDEX are the 1001, but with Toshiba it's actually backwards. So their 1001 is the non-JDEC and their 1000 is the JDEC. So I used the wrong one here. So I used a JDEC where I should have used a non-JDEC. So instead I've used this that's a Hitachi 27C0301. That is a non-JDEC and that works absolutely fine. So output enable is grounded permanently and A16 is switching as it should. Right, let's have a little quick game to prove it's working. There we go, no horrible sound that time. A bit of magic. There we go, everything's working fine.